Hi, my name is Joe Kowalski. I'm the Chief Architect, CEO, and Co-Founder here at Service Monster. I created this video to demonstrate the powerful features in our unique and advanced customer management, field service, and marketing automation platform. By the time you're done with this video, you'll have a very clear understanding of just how Service Monster can benefit your service business. And whether you're just getting started or a multi-truck, multi-regional operation, Service Monster is going to help you identify, track, and crush your business goals. In 2017, we processed over $465 million in invoices. That's over 1.2 million jobs. Almost 50% of our database are single owner operators, and we cater to corporate and franchise clients like ChemDry and Softwash Systems as well. Now, if we were sitting here one-on-one, -on -one, I'd ask you to tell me the top three things that this product has to do in order for you to consider it a success. And in the 15 years we've been doing this with thousands of service providers through this process, the responses are very similar. They want to keep better track of their customer data and history. They want better control over their scheduling and to minimize their drive times. They want to automate much of their business and marketing processes. You need reporting to help you track your key performance indicators to make sure you're in track with your goals. And you want a field service app that allow you to process the job quickly and take signatures, payment, and pictures. And you want all that wrapped up in an awesome app that does accounts receivable, integrates with QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online, is able to snap into your website and pull in leads, allows you to use multi-touch sales processes through our opportunity, and create campaigns for direct mail, email, call, and export. And to all of that, I say, welcome to Service Monster. Before I get started, I want to show you some of the resources that you have available to you as a Service Monster subscriber. Here we are in Service Monster, and if I go to this little info icon, I'll see information on contacting our support lines. You can see here that we're open Monday through Friday, 6 to 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, there's the phone number. You can also send a support ticket in or to support at servicemonster.net. Um, and we also have chat built in. We also create the Service Monster help site, and this is a video library which will help you identify what you need to do. Here in the Getting Started, there's a couple courses to go through. We'll just take a look at taxes here. And you can see here we've got a video accompanied by the important bullet point information that you're going to need in order to do whatever you want to do. This stuff is highly searchable as well, so I can search on all kinds of stuff here and the proper coursework will come up. Here we have our blog, servicemonster.net forward slash. And this is where we do a lot of posting for release notes. Um, here you can see, uh, you know, top 10 list for features in 2017. But most of the stuff is just general releases and the information of the release. So what product was it, what features, uh, fixes, and so forth. Service Monster also does a pretty extensive YouTube channel. We publish two shows a week. The first one is Ask Service Monster. So that's, you know, anywhere from a, uh, an 8 to 15 minute video talking about questions that you have in your service business that we've encountered over the last 15 years and we get asked all the time. Um, and then occasionally we'll do something like this. This is a 40 minute speech that I did on leadership and employee management. That's all freely available whether you're a Service Monster subscriber or not. We also have the Service Monster Show. We do this once a week as well, and this is a peek behind the curtain. We talk about the releases, and then we'll talk about some of the pertinent news, social activity that's going on in pop culture or social marketing and uh, Facebook and so forth. And as a Service Monster subscriber, you'll eventually get invited into the Service Monster user group, or what we call SMUG. And this will allow you to chat with other Service Monster users. You won't get in until you've reached a certain point, though. We want you to be trained in here fairly well and using the system. Um, this is not a general support line. That's what we have support 
email, chat, and phone support for. This is really dedicated to users helping users and letting us know about features and bugs, that kind of stuff. And then really an ear, a direct line to myself and Alex, the product manager. So a really good place to come chat and hang out once you get invited. It's a secret group, you can't find it, but that's the deal there. So in a nutshell, those are the resources that you have available to you outside of the platform. All right, one more small thing, and then we're gonna dive right into the demo here. Um, what I wanna do is show you exactly what's available to you from a product point of view. We're gonna go over Service Monster 6, but we also have some stuff available to you on your mobile devices. Service Monster Mobile 2, currently 2.9, uh, this has been out for a really long time, but what's amazing is it still stands the test of time over um, some of the other products that we have for the tablet. So this is still a very popular application for the tablet, but it's not the native iOS and Android apps you guys crave. We do have those, uh, and we're creating a suite of them. We've got Service Monster Mobile. For a single owner operator, this is gonna be your powerhouse out in the field. It's gonna do all the things that you need to do from answering the phone and booking a job to dealing with your orders, finding driving directions, taking payment and pictures and managing tasks and leads and all that kind of stuff. But we also have Service Monster Technician, and this is a dedicated product to uh, basically just closing the orders while out in the field. So you get your driving directions, you get all the notes that are available to you, um, you can see how many jobs you've done and how much money you've collected. If you do commissions, you can see how much commissions you're pulling in. But it gives you just the text, a really simple way to process those jobs, take pictures, collect payment, make notes, uh, update the order, right? But nothing else, nothing outside of processing a job. And so this has been a very big hit for um, a lot of people. And so we're very excited by these products. And you can see here, we also have them both on the uh, Android and on the Apple Store. So here's Service Monster Mobile on the Apple Store and Service Monster Technician as well. Okay, so here we are, home screen of Service Monster 6. Now I will say that if you go around clicking by yourself, you might find Service Monster a little intimidating. It's a very big application, it has a ton of features. But consider this, to do the normal, average, everyday job, process orders, put things on the schedule, look up accounts, those things are very easy and fairly intuitive. And you're gonna use those training videos to get those processes dialed down to best practices. But we can't go over everything Service Monster can provide to you today. I'm gonna to try to limit this down to a half an hour or 40 minutes. And this isn't a training video, right? So we're just gonna go through and look at which features are really gonna benefit your service business. Here we are again on the home screen. We've got these dashboards. The first one here is the deck. The deck helps you keep things moving forward. And so you can see here leads and opportunities through estimates and work orders, finally through to invoices here with unpaid balances. It keeps track of everything that you're doing and keeps it in front of your face. That way, nothing slips through the cracks. We have other dashboards and reports that will clue you into this stuff too, but right here you can see from a bird's eye view exactly where the business is. This dashboard in the middle is going to be your key performance indicators, just a sampling of what we can provide. Uh, the bulk of it's going to be here in the dashboard section, which we'll go over. But you can see I've got it set here to 90 days, last 90 days, comparing that to the previous year. And with that, I've got things like invoice count and average invoice, residential repeat rate, which if you guys know me, I just talk about all the time. You can see your commercial repeat rate here as well. And so, Again, as soon as you log in, having this information just right in front of your face is going to help you improve your business. Now, I'm gonna start with leads because it's kind of the top of the process. But before I can do that, we have to talk about the marketplace. We live in a world of integrations. Computers are talking to computers to make our lives easier and extend the power of our tools. We have embraced this head on. Service Monster is what's known as an API first company. API is Application Programming Interface. It's how systems talk to other systems over the internet. 
Our robust API allows you to extend the power of ServiceMonster by connecting it with other software vendors. Of course, no data is ever transferred until you've allowed them to do so within the marketplace. One of the more common uses for our API is to send new leads directly into ServiceMonster. One such example is our own free ServiceMonster web forms. Web forms allow you to snap a little code into your website, which will then display a lead capture form. We have several different versions, including a self-scheduling option, and settings here will dictate what shows up and where the lead notification is sent to. Actually, let's see how this works. I'll just whip up a little, go with Josh Miller. Now all of our uh, addresses are tied into Google Maps, which is kind of cool because we get latitude and longitude, and that's going to become important later. Not a robot. Now whether your lead comes from the API directly, through a third-party vendor or through our own web forms, it's all going to do the same thing. You're going to get a notification and that lead is going to show up in your lead bucket. So as you can see, and perhaps you might have heard, the lead came in as expected. You can't really work with a lead directly. They're meant to be a buffer, allowing you to review new prospects before you commit them to the database. You can either accept the lead or decline it. Of course, you can take the extra step and create an opportunity at this time when you accept it, but we'll get back to that. Accepting a lead will create an account record, which is the heart of ServiceMonster's CRM. You can also create accounts directly through the Quick Add. The Quick Add is a very robust little screen, and once you know how to use it, you'll have most of the basics you'll need to get going. It's very helpful as well. For most CRM products, they give you a choice. When you pick up the phone, you can either create a new record or search the system. The best ones might even prevent you from saving an account if it looks like a duplicate by asking you if you're really sure you're sure. We do both, so there's never any wasted data and you don't have to ask the client to repeat themselves, especially when the search comes up empty. Let's go ahead and type in my name here. And you can see just from my name, we'll get a handful of matches. So it found the commercial account for Service Monster. It also found a personal Joe Kowalski, and it founds what could very well be my wife. We also use company name and phone number, as well, of course, as email address. Another interesting little tool is we take into consideration the site address as well, and what's neat about that is you'll actually find neighbors, other people that you've actually done service for in that neighborhood. So that's pretty cool. After the search or matches come up, you can take a look and see if this is indeed the record that you want to work with. If I click done, the quick ad will simply take us to that account record. But let's finish creating a new account at this time. Look at that, I still have all my data. Now before I jump into creating the new account, let's talk about lead source for a second. It's an important field but only if it's used correctly. See, we allow you to select either a lead source from a marketing campaign or an account record. This will allow you to identify and work with referral rewards programs. We also track the lead source on the order. That way you know exactly what's bringing in new business in addition to knowing what's bringing your current clients back. We're gonna go ahead and select this campaign here. And let's take a look at the account screen. So let's jump into an account with a little bit of history. We'll do a search here in the global search. And we'll jump into Jody. Now accounts are the heart for any good customer management system. And of course, we have all the basic fields that you would expect like name, address, and phone. But I'd like to draw your attention to a few key areas. I'll start with the address. As you can see, we display the map along with the default image from Google Earth. You can change the uh, picture on any time you want, as well as rotating out and playing with the camera. The address section has a few views. The map view, which when you click on that will take you to Google Maps. 
the editing view, and the lookup view. And we allow you to have multiple sites per account, which is great for property managers, real estate agents, or large commercial clients. The address on the account screen is the default billing address. And you can even tell the system not to use this address, which you can use as a filter for marketing campaigns. The account title section allows you to identify alerts, which when combined with a memo field, is a powerful way to communicate VIP or problem clients at a glance. Phone fields are pretty robust. We keep the phone number pure, so you can simply tap on it on your mobile apps and dial the number. The note field allows you to track extensions or name, and you can identify the number as textable or set it as do not call. Over here, you'll see some system settings like preferred tech and sales rep. The account type field is great because we allow you to track more than just clients. You can track prospects and vendors and target this field within marketing campaigns. The account news feed is a very cool feature. In most systems, you have to click around the account record to get an entire story for the client. The Service Monster news feed gives you a chronological story for the entire account all orders and payments, jobs, notes, calls, activities, and even changes to the account. You can even add a quick note here or a full-blown activity if you want to jot down notes or set up a follow-up call. Now we'll just zip across the tabs here, but you can see custom profile fields allow you to add custom fields that we weren't smart enough to add for you. A good example is tracking whether or not your client has pets. And in some cases, if you'd like, you can track the pet name and then create a campaign targeting not the owner, but the pet. Triple your response rate. We already talked about sites. Activities are tasks, notes, call notes, email notes, that kind of thing. And we'll get to opportunities in a minute. Here's the account's entire order and payment history. Here's their job history. Recurring jobs are anything that you do on a regular basis. This is more like commercial clients, but we'll talk about that when we dive into scheduling. Referrals, like we talked about for tracking referral rewards programs. Your auditing tab will allow you to see any changes that have been made to this account over time and by whom. And contracts allow you to set up a regular monthly or quarterly payment so that you can create a program, something like Stay Beautiful, where you maybe are taking a monthly payment and doing quarterly or semi-yearly cleanings. So as you can see, we went over this kind of fast, but Service Sponsor tracks accounts very well. Now, let's talk about opportunities. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. Opportunities are a powerful sales tool, but they're completely optional. A residential-only cleaner could use Service Monster for a year and never need this feature. Opportunities allow you to handle multi-touch sales like commercial accounts or when you're chasing after that specific agent. You move an opportunity through the sales process until you either abandon it or close the deal. From here, you can create new orders jot down some notes, or schedule a follow-up call, task, or mail. You manage the opportunity details here, and when you win the deal, you mark it as one, and you're done. Just that simple. Speaking of sales, let's move on to orders. Service Monster orders come in three different flavors. Estimates, work orders, and invoices. Estimates are like proposals. You're creating an order you hope the client will agree to. A work order is an order to do the work. It's like an agreement between your company and the client. Invoices are used when work is complete and are the basis for all sales and accounting reports. As you can see here, there are several different ways to see your orders. The most useful is probably the pre-completed list. These are the orders the system thinks are ready to be converted into an invoice because their last job date has passed. This orders list makes it super easy to close out your invoices and apply payment.
Now most of the time, at least for residential clients, your teams are going to be closing out orders and taking payments in the field. For commercial accounts, you can use the invoices with balance due list to take care of these payments when you receive the check into the office. You can also use the billings feature to generate statements and billing emails and direct mail campaigns for clients with balances due. That way, you're sure to get paid on time. After payments and invoices have been entered into the system, they're ready to be exported to your accounting system. Currently, ServiceMonster supports both QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online. Now, let's take a look at an actual order. I'll use the navigation history here to jump in an order that I've been working with already. We're currently looking at an estimate. Now with estimates, work orders, and invoice, it doesn't really matter where you start. Your goal is to end up with a paid invoice. You can skip the estimate step altogether if you book your jobs over the phone. And if you're recording a job that's already been done, you can create the order and just save it as an invoice. The benefit here is that the different order types will help you control your workflow management. Over here in the sidecar, we have some of the order details. Much of this is standard fare, but check out the lead source field. Yes, there is a lead source field in your service monster orders. This is actually pretty amazing. The lead source on the account screen is how you got the client in the first place. That's your customer acquisition. Once that's set, it should never change. It's a fact forever. I see a lot of imports from other programs where the account lead source is marked as repeat. It breaks my heart. Not only does this kill any chance you have of identifying what retention campaigns are working, but it deletes your entire lead history. The order lead source here allows you to accurately track the effectiveness of your client retention campaigns. And just like the account screen, you can set the lead source to a campaign or to an account. Now, this sidecar is a little tricksy. Its content changes based on what's selected. If I select the account, for instance, the sidecar now allows me to edit important account details without having to navigate to the account screen. If I click on the site record, I get the site details. I can even track service items, room dimensions, or other client property to track the service history for each item. Entering in line items is super easy. It'll even backfill for you based off your products and services list. You can even use quick codes for rapid data entry. Let's clear this line item so I can show you some of the other features. We can use predefined packages too, like we have here. And if you have a super large order, you can use the bulk add items feature to really make the whole process super easy. Promotions are used to tie together packages, discounts, and lead sources. Let's say you're sending postcards with a promo code for $20 off and an additional 5% off the entire order. We can bring in the entire promotion with a simple selection. And as you can see, it's brought in the package, the discounts, and set the lead source. Now that we have a line item, we can attach some service items. This is totally optional, and when you use it, it'll create a history for each of these service items. You can use that history to increase your upsell potential by as much as 30%. It looks like this. Mrs. Jones, I see we're here to clean your main living room and your master bedroom, but I see here that we haven't taken care of your boy's room in over four years, and it's been five years since we did protect it. That's just gross. Why don't you have him clean it up for a bit and before we leave, we'll make sure to hit his room. Mrs. Jones's typical response to this is, has it been that long? Why yes, let's do that. So those are the basics of the Service Monster order. You can see from the toolbar, you can also apply payment, send an email with attachment, copy the entire order, and schedule a job. The tabs across the top give you access to the order's history, any payments that have been applied, commissions, activities, images, documents, and a complete audit history. Now let's save this work order and put it on the schedule. The schedule is the heart of your field service operations and will be the home screen for most desktop users. 
But before we dig in, let's finish the job for Jody real quick. Oh look, we have a tech in the area. Boom. Nice route. Okay, what just happened? This is the Service Monster scheduling map view. It shows a single day and all of the available trucks, vans, technicians, salespeople, or what we call routes. If we click on one, you can see I can set this up however I please. The embedded map is from Google, and we plot the route you and your techs will be taking that day. You can hover over the little pins here and get information on the job. You can also track your technicians live using the mobile apps. But as cool as this all is, let's dive into the nuts and bolts of Service Monster schedule, the weekly view. This gives you a lot more information and has a ton of flexibility. If I open the settings here, I can set my default work hours and maximum service radius. I can set the home base location too, which is important because we use that to pick a job color based off the location of the job. Imagine your home base was in the center of this color wheel. If I travel north, I'm heading into blue jobs. The further north I go, the darker the color. Service Monster does this automatically by doing a little trig and plucking a job color from this color wheel based on the latitude and longitude that we get from Google when you enter the address information into the system. Now these colors make a lot more sense. That's why Jody's job was perfect for Brad's route, and then the system of course redrew his route for him. Now we pulled Jody's job from the sidecar here in the unscheduled job list. You can put as many in there as you'd like, and that makes it really nice when you're trying to set up routes maybe the day before. The waiting list is another user favorite, allowing you to put a job on the schedule and the wait list. So you can let Mrs. Jones know that she can get her cleaning a little bit early if you've had a cancellation in her area that day. The schedule tab has all of the job information for everything that you're looking at on the schedule. You can even get the job details here by hovering on the job block on the schedule. And if you wanted to, you can turn the details on. And now of course we can see all that information directly in the job blocks. These green blocks here, these are reminders. You can commit them from the schedule, either as a work order or an invoice. The recurring job setting for this account tells the system when to create these reminders and what to put on the order. This is great for commercial accounts that need cleaning every third Thursday of every other month. They also can be used for residential contracts that we saw earlier. Jumping back to the schedule here, and one more look at the settings. We can control things like cell height, first day of the week, and the number of days to show, along with things like route details and totals and things of that nature. So you can see this is pretty powerful and super customizable. We even have an extensing printing feature called Route Packets. It allows you to print the orders and all the job information you might need while in the field, like if you don't have a great internet connection, or the techs really don't need the app, or just because you're old school. You can even email the route directly to the technician. One last scheduling feature I want to talk about alerts, notifications, and confirmations. Service Monster can text the technician when there are changes to the schedule, but it can also text reminders to your clients. If we schedule a new job from here, we get the quick ad with the job information all set. I'll grab my account real quick. And look, from here we can send an email and text confirmation and set up reminders. If we check out reminders, job reminders, they're here in the settings section, they allow you to automate all of the pre-job and post-job email and text messages. Very powerful stuff. Moving on to marketing. Service Monster is a marketing powerhouse. Nearly 50% of our code is dedicated to these features. 
It's not simply tracking lead source on the account or a handful of afterthought. There are a number of different Service Monster campaign types. Lead sources are simply a record of some external campaign, like flyers or a radio ad. Mail campaigns allow you to upload a Word document template for mail merge. You can print letters and or labels. Call campaigns create call activities, which can get assigned to any number of your sales agents for follow-up. Email campaigns use email marketing templates and will mail merge and send emails to your target audience. Export campaigns will create an export file that you can use with any third-party vendor, like mail houses, auto dialers, and heck, even fax campaigns. Now all this begs the question, who? Who will get the emails? Who will be in the export file? And who will get the phone calls? Let's take a look at some of the campaign filtering that we have in Service Monsters marketing campaigns. We'll jump into this active customers list. You can see here that it's filtered out 6,910 accounts out of the 8,506 that are in this database. Looks like we have active set to true and email is not blank. Anytime an account matches both of these criteria, it'll be included into the list. I can run this campaign manually to send emails to all 6,900 clients. Select email, set the document template, some casing options, and when you click run, they're off and running. Here's one focused on a 12-month reminder. This is filtering out 68 accounts out of our 8500 database. And you can see here we're also targeting whether or not the account is active. They've never said don't mail me. And their last invoice date was between 12 and 13 months ago. This is a great campaign if you want to send a reminder. Hey, it's time to get your carpets clean. It's been a year since your last service. If we run this campaign, we can create letters, and labels to print for a direct mail campaign. And if we wanted to run a call campaign targeting all clients that we haven't done service for in over a year. You can see here there's a number of filters including not commercial and last invoice is not within the last 12 months. If I run this campaign, I can create a call list and target any number of users. Now executing campaigns manually is great, but for a system, you need to automate it. Enter drip campaigns. Let's take a look at this prospect drip. The main who in this drip campaign is filtering for all prospects. You can see here we've set account type equal to prospect they're an active account, and their email is not blank. The green blocks control when this leg is to run and apply any additional filters. In this case, it looks like the campaign is running daily at 10 o'clock and is applying an additional filter related to customer acquisition date. In this case, within the first 24 hours of putting a new account, into the database. On day one, they get, well, something. This blue block represents the what, in this case an email. There are what's here on the sidecar and you'll be able to add more from the marketplace. So on day one, they get an email. If they ever book a job, the account type changes to customer, so they'll drop out of the top target completely. On day three, they're set up to get another email, and this time I'm assuming the content is going to be different. And in this third leg, they're setting up for a VIP. So in this case, we're doing customer acquisition is between 30 and 31 days, and the account subtype contains VIP. So let's say you're working a prospect, you go to the account, you mark the subtype as VIP, and they will automatically be included in this campaign whereby they will receive a direct mail piece within 30 days from being put into the Service Monster database. Here's an example of a 12-step client retention program which is modeled very much 
like our Fill My Schedule campaign. You can see we've got thank you, three, six, nine, and one year email reminders. As an optional service, we also offer Fill My Schedule, where we send out thank you and reminder cards to your clients automatically. That program gets a national average of over 800% ROI, is done here within our Service Monster facility, and again, it's completely optional. Service Monster reports and dashboards help you keep your business on track. You can filter, print, and even export your data in a number of different formats. We don't have time to go through all of the reports Service Monster can offer. And I want to spend a little more time on dashboards, but know that they're well equipped and you can even create custom reports. Be warned, you'll need some pricey software and some database knowledge to pull it off. Support can write some reports too, but there's a fee for that, so just FYI. The vast majority of our clients have what they need from the system, or they can export the data and piece it together in a spreadsheet. Another little known reporting tool is the account grid and order grid custom view feature. If I navigate to the account grid, I can add a custom view. Notice this looks a lot like the filtering system in the marketing campaigns. Let's create a custom view for people with pets. I can use our custom profile field. Now I have a custom view which displays all of the accounts in the system that have pets. I can even modify the grid here and add that custom profile field where we kept the pet's name. Groovy. There are tons of uses for this feature that can replace some of your more common reporting needs. Now let's talk about dashboards. I stare at my dashboards for Service Monster more than I care to admit. They're a great way to help identify an issue before it becomes a major problem. Dashboards allow you to monitor your key performance indicators and compare your current performance with past periods. Kelvin, you know, the temperature guy, he said that if you don't measure it, you can't improve it. And I believe it. I've seen hundreds of companies improve their business simply by starting to be mindful of their data. So let's take a look at what Service Monster gives you. This is your repeat rate dashboard. As a service provider, this is your most important KPI. And almost all service providers calculate it incorrectly. The blue is residential and the green is commercial. And we can compare any of these numbers to the last period. We also show the average invoice by order group as this can greatly affect your repeat rate. The sales dashboard is full of information related to leads, opportunities, inbound phone call results, and top line revenue. Skipping the marketing, we have campaign results. Remember all the way back to our talk about lead source? Well, here's where it pays off. We can see which campaigns are bringing in new business as well as which campaigns are successfully bringing back existing clients. And leaderboards help you gamify your goals with your techs and sales staff, or maybe even a good way to hold yourself accountable. All right, one last section, guys, settings. Don't worry, I'm not gonna go into each one of these, but this is basically where you customize Service Monster for your business. For instance, let's say we wanted to add values to an account subtype. Here you go or pretty much any other customizable list that you can have in Service Monster. Check out these print settings. Super flexible. I can create multiple print options and inside each print option I can set the way that the orders will print for estimates, work orders, and invoices. I can even use different forms to give the client a different experience and I can trigger that also based off residential or commercial accounts. I mean, obviously, there's tons of stuff here. Custom fields that we talked about for the account. Here's where you set your tax rates. Your SMTP settings is where you use custom email pipelines to increase your deliverability. Your job reminders that we talked about for text 
and email notifications. You can set up your products and your services. Whether you charge by the room or the square foot, the pane or the window, or each. It really doesn't matter. You can set up packages that we talked about and promotions. Here's where you manage your employees, giving them roles and responsibilities. You can create commissions, manage your routes, create any of those marketing, email, and text templates that we talked about, import accounts or prospects via CSV. You can manage your users, any API users like webmasters and so forth to tie directly into your service monster data. And of course, you have both audit and access logs as well. Wow. So much power, so much horsepower. Service Monster really gives you what your service business needs and the flexibility to really customize it and make it your own. And there you go, guys. Service Monster in 40 minutes, give or take. I hope you had as much fun watching it as I did making it. We're very proud of what we've built here. You know, we're very focused on helping unlikely business owners build massively successful businesses. And I think we've done just that with the tools that we provide here. So here's the pitch. Service Monsters either $80 a month or $125 a month. Both come with unlimited users, unlimited training, support, and all the same features. The only difference between the two is how many trucks, fans, or employees you need to put on your schedule. One to three routes is gonna be $80 a month. Four or more routes is $125 a month. And we're currently running a promotion where we're waiving the $200 setup fees and 30 day money back guarantee. So basically sign up, it's 80 bucks, no risk for 30 days. And you can really see how Service Monster helps you take control over your business. That's it guys, click the button below go sign up and see what thousands of service providers already know that we can really help you grow your business and from everyone here at service monster thank you so much for watching